um, on an invitation on the webinar with the handsome and talented, as I always say, John McGuigan, dog trainer extraordinaire. How are you, sir? Hello, I'm very well, thanks. Oh, good. Aloha. Okay, so um, we're going to be talking about a number of different things today. What I suggest you might want to have a pen and paper ready because we'll be giving you some really good instruction. And John's got a number of videos that he shot for you, and you're going to learn a lot today. If your dog is jumping up or dragging you around or barking inappropriately, this is the man to speak to to solve the problem. Um, I'm already impressed with some of the stuff we've already covered. Uh, I wish I had a dog to practice on. I'm just going to have to keep my else. Um, <laughs> but make sure you stay on this webinar for some time because you can learn a lot of really useful information that you can apply today and it will work today. Um, so thank you for taking the time to, to tune in. Um, anyone who's watching this uh, video or listening to this information or reading this information is interested in having an obedient doggy who's having a good life and is a, a, a warm loving companion to you um, and is not just a you know a, a prop on the end of a rope um, to demonstrate like a trophy. This is about a win-win relationship for both the human and the dog. Do you agree with that, John? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So with that said, tell us, lead us into a wee introduction. What are we going to be looking at tonight? What is the presenting problem that you can solve today? So uh, the we're going to look at loosely walking, uh, not pulling and lead, the dog walking with you, whatever you want to call that. So basically, you're, the dog is on lead and we're looking for uh, to teach the dog or teach the owner and the dog to, to walk together on a lead without being pulled. Um, and it's a really common problem for a variety of reasons. Uh, which we'll talk about as as the, the webinar goes on, but um, and it can be it can be quite difficult to resolve unless we do the right things. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot. There's, it's quite a big topic, so there's a lot to talk about with it. Okay, so you're on the show. Um, you, we've got a number of videos lined up of you doing bits and bobs. So uh, okay. do you want to leave so, this or just get straight into it? Yeah. So we'll put the first one on, and um, the first one is uh, what we'll do is if, if you just if you let that run, the first one that I sent you. Okay, now this seems a little bit um, it seems a little bit kind of left field. So this is my friend Sam, who's an acrobat. Okay, and what we did was we shot this video to illustrate the difficulty that we have when we have two beings with different physical abilities trying to negotiate. Um, the same course while attached to each other. Okay, so Sam's 22 or something like that, 23, I'm 44. Um, Sam's a, a professional a uh, acrobat and circus performer. So you'll see how well, how easily it is for him to move around and how difficult it is for me while attached to him to follow the same course. So just moving around here. So Sam's movement's fluid, mine's is not. <laughs> moving like an old man. Okay, so this is the nice bit here. So you see how easily Sam gets over that and then how difficult it is for me to balance while attached to him. And then this is interesting. Sam goes through one way. I have to go through another way because of he's holding my other side, if you like. Okay, so this is a little bit. It's just a, it is purely to illustrate the difficulty that lots of people have with their dog. Okay, so this is me trying to go over this while holding on to him. Okay. And that could be, you see the difficulty I'm having there, so that, that could be like going up um, a flight of stairs with your dog attached to a lead or like going down a flight of stairs, you know, us moving at a different pace from our dog, the dog being low to the ground and us being higher up, depending on the length of, of the height of the dog, okay. So this is just, it's what what I'm going to do with this video is, is I'm going to, ref, as we watch later on, I'll be referring to you, referring back to this. Um, and the difficulty that I had trying to move with Sam through this. And what are we really doing? We're just, I mean, we're just moving around and going over and under a railing, really, you know. So it's really just two beings with difficult, dif different physical abilities trying to navigate the same set of obstacles. <laughs> yeah. Come on, <laughs> And you see the way that I go underneath it, it's completely different from the way Sam does. All right, <laughs> so there we go. Okay. Right, now, I have to say already up front, 
as ever. Uh, ah, was that your idea? Um, yeah, so I'd done a little, uh, Sam and I um, had done, well, Sam had uh, put on a, a little kind of introduction to parkour course last year, um, and I went along, and that's where I met him. Um, and uh, it's just, I think what one of the one of my strengths as a teacher is um, that it's trying to see things to me to illustrate points for people, you know, to say that is more difficult than what we might expect it to be, and it's just using kind of novel things like that that will that will stick in people's mind and. Um, you know, so I, I'd seen Sam doing a little bit of work, and then I'm like, all oh, right, okay, that's where I can relate that to working with your dog, you know. I think that's, just just seeing that alone, there's two things for me. Number one, it really rams home the whole point. Two different species linked together by a bit of metal or a bit of cord or whatever, you know, um, yeah. and one of them trying to dominate the other, or even, or even not trying to dominate the other, trying to be... You know, um, attentive and permissive, but still, but still, still, still species. Of yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Let me go. Imagine how difficult that would be if um, if I couldn't physically move like that, and he was then making me do that. So he's now what he's now starting to do is actually drag me around that. You know. Yeah. And that's that's in a relatively low distracting environment. Um, there's, you know, there's not much else going on. I can concentrate fully on what I'm doing. You know, there's no danger. There's nothing else that's interesting, and we've got all these things that when we're out for a walk with a dog. I honestly think if I was a dog owner right now, and I used to be a dog owner, so I can relate to this. But if I was a dog owner right now, you've already taught me a massive lesson by just letting me see that video. Yeah, so, uh, that really that lands first time. <laughs> so that as ever. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Loving your work, man. But yeah, that really, that really runs at home. That's I'm awesome. Done. Okay, next step. Okay, so, um, so what tends to happen is that um, loosely walking very often is. I'm going to just two seconds, pop Jonathan. I'm just going to pop him in the other room. All right. Okay. So you guys, this piece. <laughs> He's just playing with a couple of his toys, so it made a little bit noisy. So. Um, yeah, it, the dog pulls on the end of the lead for a variety of reasons. One, we're not mo we're not moving harmoniously with our dog. Um, the dog has got different sets of interests from us, okay, um, and. Uh, and what then happens is we then start using some, very often, we start using um, some sort of mechanical device, whether it, it's a head collar, a collar which um, restricts or uh, causes the dog discomfort, or some type of harness um, which also restricts the dog's movement. And all these things make it easier for us uh, rather and make it more difficult for the dog to move naturally. Um, you get uh, leads that have got um, bungee cords in them, and that's to act as a shock absorber, so that it's not we are not feeling that strain at the end of the leads, but the dog feels that all the time. You know, so all these things. So basically, if you look at any piece of equipment which is designed to stop a dog from pulling, it generally designed to stop a dog from pulling through discomfort. Generally, and the discomfort can be mild, but they're generally there to, to say to, to make it uncomfortable enough for the dog to try and pull. So what they do is that by relieving that um, pulling, um, they walk next to us, if you like. You know, so, um, and I do as much as I can to get away from that so that to teach the, the, the owner and the dog to walk, to walk together as part of a team. Okay. Okay. So... Which, which right away bumps up against the phrase taking the dog for a walk. Yeah, yeah, you're going for a walk together. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you want the next video? Okay, yeah. Okay, no, just. I'm going to turn this. Can we turn the sound down on that? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so this is just me going for uh, us, going for a walk together, okay? Oh. And um, he's on a six foot lead. And what happens is if he moves out towards the end of the lead, I will then stop and wait for him to join me again. So you see there he joins me, turns back around and looks at me. This is a walk, so this would be a sniff walk. I'm going with him and then the two of us are going together. I'm guiding him, guiding him safely, okay? And what he does is he stops, looks at me and waits for me to catch up, okay? My body position is nice and relaxed. Um, I try and keep the, the lead loose as much as I can. So he's just a little bit concerned there about the two people walking past on the path that we saw. So he just has a little bit of look. And he got a spook there, so he's spooky with smells. So that's why he raced forward there, okay? And then I just slow him down, wait till he settles. And what I'm looking to do here is actually have him sniff him, okay? Good boy. Nice and public. Nice and public. This is relatively early on with us practicing this. Okay, so I'm moving around him in the environment as well and giving him that space that he needs to, to explore. So you see how there he pulls forward and I just stop and brace him? Nice. Wait till he comes back towards me and then we start walking on again. And he slows down and checks in with me. He starts to speed up so I slow down. Good. And then I, I give him a little bit of prompt in there to see we want to move over to the left. Okay. So this is quite a nice walk for him, and we're saying, I'm saying to him, I can provide you with the, the stuff that you like, but it's contingent on the both of us doing it together. I'm just doing the toilet. Okay. So I'm not preventing him from sniffing, I'm not saying that he can't sniff. Uh, I'm just saying, if you want to sniff something, we'll go together. And I'm watching him to see what he's interested in. So if he pulls forward on the end of the lead, you generally pointing or pulling in the direction of something which is interesting for him. So I'll slow down, wait till he reconnects with me like there. And then we'll move off. Nice. Yeah, and I have guided nice. him there. Lovely. Okay, now, this is interesting here, and this is just to illustrate something. That, um, so, just, I think it's in this video, my son goes away to dispose of um, the poo bag. And that's why he keeps looking there, because he wants us to go back together. So my daughter's videoing. Now, I've asked him a couple of times there, and he still says, no, Max isn't back yet. Okay, and then when Max rejoins us, you'll see him starting to walk with us. Just pan around and get Max just and pan around and get Max and, and, just pan pan back to me. and then just pan back to me. Perfect. And just pan back to me. And then when Max has joined the group again, he's ready to Hi. come Hi. with us. Lovely. Lovely. Nice. Nice. Oh, okay, that was it. Okay, that was it. Okay. 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 So, we could watch that video. I could watch it in a different narration for the next five times that I gave it, you know, so there's there's tons in that video, um, and that's only two and a half minutes long, so two and a half minutes or three minutes, whatever it was, um, and I am watching him the whole time to see what is it you're interested in, is that safe for you to do that, okay, um, He's a spooky dog anyway, so, I mean, he had a whole bunch of problems before um, he came to live with us, and um, we're working through them, so some of his, some of his pulling on a lead is a symptom of those problems, it's not just him pulling on a lead because he's pulling on a lead, you know, um, and that's a really nice walk for him, you know, so nice and slow, um, he gets to stop and sniff, and we basically just meander through the environment. Um, the lead handling there is done, my shoulders as much as I can are relaxed, my elbows are soft, my hips and my knees and my ankles are soft. Um, I'm using my weight to brace him, so if he moves forward, I move my weight away from the direction that he's pulling in, um, so that I'm not using my arms to pull him back. So if, if he has nothing to pull against, he will not pull forward. Um, but it's when we pull, it's called opposition reflex. It's basically what happens if somebody bumps you, and you that's why you don't fall over. So if somebody bumps you, you will immediately have a reflex to keep yourself upright. 
And the way that it works with dogs is if we pull forward, they will pull against that force. So very often you'll see people walking down the the, the, um, the street pulling their dog like this, and all that we're doing the whole time is giving the dog something to pull against. The other thing that struck it. me watching that, yeah, the other thing that struck me there was I would be used to seeing people on the phone mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, like striding up the path, basically dragging the dog with them to get the yeah. walk over as quick as possible, you know, or the last thing they're looking at is the dog, they're looking at everything else, or chatting to folk yeah. or everything else, but the dog's not going to get any attention, the dog's just here to, to go for a walk, you know, yeah. so right from the start, you could see the, the kind of rapport and the relationship between you and the animal, which is probably lacking in an awful lot of cases. Yeah, and, and this is just, it's, it's work that needs to be done at the start, I'm not saying that that's what our walks will be like forever, but that's what our walk is like when I'm teaching them how to walk with me, so, um, I, I put my phone on silent, um, or yeah, I put my phone on silent. I don't listen to music. I watch what he's doing. Um, I am very aware of, and because I know him, I'm glancing up at the environment. And it's not, I'm not scanning the environment all the time, but I glance up at the environment to see is there something there that he's likely to be concerned about. You know, yeah. and it means I can then start dealing with that before it happens, and then move him away, or if it's something that he is interested in, moving. So things like um, drains, anywhere the, the the scent would stick. So basically, edges of things, uh, drains, um, lamp posts, bins. You know, all these things are interesting for your dog because one, because other dogs pee on them, and two, because scent gets stuck in it, and by looking and planning your way up your, your your path as you're walking up it, you can see he's likely to start pulling when we get within six feet of that, you know. And it's not been, I know this is my job and this is what I do full time, but it, it's, it, it's just having some awareness that your dog perceives the world differently from what, from how we perceive it, you know, um, and it, it ends up, you end up having a more symbiotic relationship with them, yeah. which is nice. Well, that's cool. Right, right from the start of that video, you can see that you know that's that's, pre that's something that's, there's something present there that's not normally present. It's yeah, like and what was one of the, the the loveliest things I had ever seen with somebody with their dog? I was sitting in the traffic lights, and there was a, a fella in his seventies, and he had a, a little West Highland Terrier, and the two of them were just walking together, and they were just completely in sync with each other. They they just they knew each other were there through the leads. The little dog stopped. He's of now. He did, I watched him. It's not that he saw the dog stopping. He felt the, the 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 change in that lead position in his hand, and he just slowed down and stopped. Looked forward. The dog sniffed for five or ten seconds, and then the dog moved forward again. And he felt the change in the lead pressure. And it's just. And when I say lead pressure, I mean how it's hanging in his hand. You know, um, and the dog started moving on, and he moved on again. And it was. It's one of the. Is one of my favourite moments that I've ever seen with anybody with a dog. Um, it was it was just really lovely because the two of them were completely in sync with each other. You know, it was really cool. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm so, moving on. Yeah, look at the next one. Next bit. Okay, so. This is a little bit of formal work that we're doing, I'm doing here, okay, and what I'm doing is, a, this is form, start, starting to teach him working with me more, so what I'm doing, I have the treats in my hand, and I'm getting him to look up at the treats, and when he looks up and walks with me, I drop the treat down, so you'll see it here, he drops the treat, I walk forward, and he comes back up, okay, so, this is an exercise for a bunch of different reasons that I'm doing this, but all of this helps him start working with you on the move, okay, and him concentrate that sometimes we will have to walk past things which are interesting, okay. Tell repeat what you're doing here again. Okay, so the hand that's out there has treats in it, okay. When he catches up with me and walks with me for a certain number of paces, so I change direction because he misses me there, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. That's nice, bro. Okay, and then he gets his treat. Okay. okay so and this is luck. it's just teaching him to walk with me on the move. Okay. And to concentrate because sometimes I will actually have to say we can't stop and sniff you, we just need to go and can you pay attention to me while we're doing it? Okay. So we could probably watch that one again. Okay. So there's lots of different ways to teach um, heel work, and this is just this is just one of them. Okay. So you get I've got his attention. He's with me before I start start moving off. Walks with me a few paces, and he gets reinforced with the treat. And then again, I turn and change direction and see if you follow me. And all of this work. Um, this is just another exercise, but all of this work has helped with him walking with me when out. So even though this is a formal training session, it leaches into the informal stuff when we just go for a walk together. Because he's getting into the habit of being with me outside, doing cool stuff with me, walking with me, moving with me, ignoring other things. What's interesting as well about this is this is tiring for him because of the head position he has to hold himself in. Okay, that's so I can only do this for a little bit at a time because I need to build up his fitness for it. And very often that's what people nice don't problem. do. They don't nice build their dog's fitness up for nice working, wa walking nice with them because they, they think that the dog will just walk with them. So you see that the whole way back down there, I'm not doing any reinforcement with him, but he's walking with me. Okay, so. From the last, when the last treat went down and I started walking down, the training session had finished, but he continued to walk with me. So even if he'd have been on the lead there, you, you see how one leeches into the other. Okay. Um, the other thing is you'll see that with with all these videos, um, Ian Dunbar, who's a who is really the first trainer that I, I learned from, he says you don't have a dog pulling problem; you have a dog not wanting to be with you problem. All right. right okay. So the problem is that your dog isn't pulling and then the lead. That's just a symptom. The actual problem is that your dog doesn't want to be with you. Your dog wants to be out elsewhere in the environment. So if you work on recall and you work on doing stuff with your dog all the time, your dog's now more likely to want to be with you. Uh -huh. You know. So with, with with him, since I've had him and since December, and then with our other dog Watson, um, we do lots of stuff, which is just doing stuff together so going out on a walk is just doing something else together you know rather than i play with you with the ball in the house or in the garden or i take you to the street the um, to the park and let you off the lead and then you get to do your own thing so there's, we're actually not doing anything together whereas the more stuff you do together with your dog the more your dog will actually want to walk with you you know so it's the same as with any relationship you just keep paying into it and then the dog pays out by wanting to be with you. I think it's really beneficial there when you were, when you you explained what was going on. Um, was there a clicker in there as well? That's yeah. So what I'm doing is, yeah, the the I am marking the set the num I, I click the certain number of steps that I want, and then mark it, and then sorry, then reinforce it with the food. Okay. Right. So I'm basically right. saying, can you hold that position of trotting forward and looking at me for that 5, 8, 10, 15, 100 paces, whatever we're training, and I will mark it and reinforce it. But we start off low and work our way up. It's, it's, it's barely simple when you break it down like that, but it's, it looks amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love it. It, it, I love it's it. simple, but it's not easy, and, and it takes work. You know, um, Because of the approach that, that I have when I'm training with the people that I've learned from is... Um, I'm wanting to do the least aversive training that I possibly can. So anything that I can do which gets the dog willingly working with me because I'm a source of good things or he has he's having a good experience with me, the better, you know. So when we start introducing aversive tools for him to and then what he's doing is he's just walking with you because he doesn't want to experience that pain or discomfort. But then that has other implications in your relationship as well. Well, it can and do. Human relationships. <laughs> human yeah. relationships as well. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Walk away and I'll beat you. Okay, cool. So, next video? Yep. 
Okay, now, just uh, so it's just a last couple of minutes. So just exactly the same again, okay, now what's interesting here is the curve is difficult for him. So he has to navigate that curve, okay. Now I start moving left and right here, you'll see him, I think it's in this video, yeah. So as we approach the curve, as I cross it, so you'll see here I'll look round and then I go back across, you you should see him look glancing down at that curve. That's not bad. Okay, nice. so that's that's quite nice from him. It must have been in the last another video. Okay. So see there just as he comes off the curb he has a little bit of a glance down to see where that is. And if the lead is too short then a lot of the time we're holding him up. So see there he's glancing as he moves across that curb. And he just has a little bit of a look down to see where that is. I'm doing a bit funny hold up there. The only reason he's on a long line here because he's got um, he, he's super boisterous around people, and it's just in case that there's somebody walks past, they've got physical control over. So the reason I put this in is because it's these learning points here of him glancing down at, at that curb as he passes it. He misses that one. And, and this is him getting more comfortable now that he can he's actually able to move across that sort of without looking down at it. Yeah, you get tired. So it's the same as yourself, know how many steps you have in your room, uh, sorry, in your house, in the dark. Nice. So you count them as you're walking down the steps because you know there's 13 steps, you know, from... And he's starting to get more uh, familiar here. That's not bad. Alright, so that, that's... That's the only purpose of that. So when we have a dog on head collar, or um, if the dog is on too short a lead, and we are holding the dog's head up, the dog's now doesn't have the dog. He now doesn't have that freedom to start glancing down to see. I need to see where I'm going before I put my feet down. You know, um, and yeah. So that 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 was the purpose of that video. So and you picked the curb to give him that uneven uneven surface. Yeah. Okay. And what I do with that as well when I'm when I'm training this, uh, working with them is I'll go across curbs. There's a video of going up and down the stairs as well, um, from uh, pavement to grass, grass to pavement, grass to gravel, you know, pavement to chuckies, um, and we're doing all of these so that he's like, oh, that's just so. Even though there's a, you you might see we see the uh, uh, change in the. The color of the the, the texture, um, and we can easily go from one to the next. But sometimes the first time the dog walks on grass, they go, "What the hell is this?" You know. So, um, and all these things can get in the way with the dog walking next to us because it's different for them, and they move differently. And the dog's barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Look at the big boots on, like you may have. You know. Yeah, so. absolutely. This is great. I'm learning a lot. This is fascinating, and it's good. What I, I love watching you um, work as well. Did did he get a week in a jackpot reward at the end there for his effort? Um, it was probably it's probably not the, with jackpot. I mean, that's a slightly different um, issue with jackpots. There's um, <laughs> they don't think jackpots in, improves the performance, but it's certainly it's something nice to do for your dog. So I think I just gave him whatever I had left in my hand. You know, because it was in my hand anyway, he's as well having it, you know. And he goes, oh, cool, I got an extra few pieces of sausage from Dad, you know. <laughs> okay, next video. Here we go. Okay, so this is stairs, okay. Now, just pause it there a second. Okay, so when we're doing stair work, it's the same as with everything, both with that work that we're doing with them moving forward and targeting in my hand, we have to do both left and right. Because if we're only doing one side, then we end up getting muscular imbalances from one side to the next. Okay, so you can see there in the in the, the video that the two videos before, if he's if I'm only getting him to target on the left hand side, he will he will naturally be looking up slightly over his right shoulder. Okay, and he'll then get more. So you get this side of his. Um, body is getting more work so you'll get um tighter muscles on this side 
not so much muscular development on the other side. So that's why you need to work both, okay, when you're doing stuff like this. Um, there's a traditional dog training is um, dog on the left, okay, and that's still a really pervasive um, attitude across dog training is that you walk your dog on your left, okay, and the only reason that's where this came from is that we, we historically we had our gun on our right, so the pistol would or the rifle would be held in your right hand, so the dog was on the left, and whether that's gun dog training or military or whatever, so you would have your firearm on your right and that's why the dog was on your left and there's still dog clubs that teach loose lead walking by having your dog on your left and the rules i have is see if the dog's walking with you and he's not tripping you up and you're not playing a merry-go-round with the lead across the back of your arms or stepping across all the time he's pretty much free to move backwards and forwards harmoniously with you you know so if you're walking down the street with your wife or your husband you know whoever your significant other if they move across to look in a shop window or to exactly see a nice sports car or something, you wouldn't say, no, 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 you need to walk on that side. You know, I walk this side and you walk that side. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, so when I'm doing this, I, I don't know if it's in this video, but if you're doing exercises like this to get your dog to walk with you, you need to do them both left and right. There you go. Okay, so... Wow. You can let that one run. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is me teaching him how to navigate stairs with me. So what he would generally do is race down the stairs in front of him because that's easy for him. But if he's attached to me, what happens is it's not easy for me. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm moving forward with him. That one, that street the other day was a little bit high. Okay, should have been down lower. And I'm putting the treats on so that he's now I'm encouraging him to look where he's going as well, so that he's not just racing up there. So you see how he stopped himself there. Okay? And that's that's what we get. So you see how because the treat bounced down there, and if that just illustrates it might not have been a treat, it might just be that he wanted to race down the stairs because it's easier for him. So this is off. teaching me how to move slowly with me. So if I come out of, um, you live in a block of flats and you're coming in the shopping and you've got your dog attached to you, you know, he needs to be able to walk slowly with you and it's difficult for them, you know. So I'm teaching him to do this on a loose lead. This is just the teaching part, okay, and it's done, I, I use food for it. Um, but as he gets better, he'll, he'll just learn, oh, this is what we do. So we'll back up again. So you see how he started to race forward there and all I did was I just stopped him on that lead to say that's as far as you can go. And the lead's over my shoulder here. Okay, and then back down again. And this is a lot, but he's a fit dog. He, and he's fit for this, so um, this is a lot of exercise to do. It takes a lot of concentration for him to do this as well. Doing well. Yeah. This is just, I mean, this is in the summer, so um, we've, we've worked on a variety of stuff over the summer with him. Lovely, and that's nice there. Okay, so you see how he stops and checks in with me. And that's better now. Now, you see how the movement in his back legs, that's not a natural movement for him, yeah. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Okay. But he actually has to learn how to do this because that's as fast as I might be able to walk down a set of stairs. So your dog has to learn how to actually move unnaturally sometimes in order to, because your dog's physically more able than we are. All right. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And I think the next one is just... With the What's that? I'm enjoying watching you working with the dog. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's nice. Um, yeah, you've got an objective in mind, and you go out and like, well, cool, and you can see the improvements with him because when I first got him, he'd never been in a lead before I got, him, you know, um, and just, I mean, literally did not know that I was on the other end of that lead, and would just drag me 
everywhere that he wanted to go, you know, and he's a big chunk of a dog. I mean, he's 32 kilos of muscle. So, um, yeah, total powerhouse. He's got a back end like a tractor, you know, so if, if he wants to move me, he can move me, you know, um, and what I'm saying to him is you just need to move with me, you know, because your old man can't move that quickly. <laughs> So what are we going to see next? Uh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is just coming down the stairs. And it's just from a different angle. It's only a minute and a half. This is a different training session. I just asked him to come back there. He raced up in front of me and I just said to him, can you wait for me? I asked him to come back and by guiding him with my hand. And then that trotting up the stairs there is easy for him. He's built for speed, isn't he? Yeah. So that's really difficult for him to do that for some dogs. Stop, start, stop, start. So it actually takes a lot of. Imagine, um, just pause that there a second, Jonathan. So although he's on four four legs, and he's built to be on four legs, think of the. Imagine what imagine what it would be like, and this is going back to the video with Sam at the start. Imagine walking down a set of stairs on all fours forwards, yeah. slowly, you know, think that. yeah, and being pulled back at the same time, okay, so you've got all that weight moving forward on your shoulders, so if your dog's not fit for that, that's difficult, and what they do is they race forward so that that's, they're getting rid of that, and then they can balance themselves quite quickly. You know, so there's a, the, a physical aspect of this of your dog being physically fit enough to walk with us as well. Mm -hmm. um, so th that him, him holding himself with his back end elevated, so he basically his hips are higher up than his shoulders are. He's got that pressure moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And I'm asking him to lift his neck up as well. Okay, so that's, that's putting a lot can be putting a lot of pressure which is why when i'm using my, my food placement i'm actually trying to put it so that if he's spines this way i'm putting the food here not here because i'll be putting that pressure on his neck you know yeah. so um, and these are all things to be aware of when you're and if, and if you've got a small dog you know if you've got a dachshund or, or a terrier you know they I mean, they only look up and they're only your ankles anyway you know so um, asking them to come up even further for that, so they really need to look at where they're going. Well, I had dogs when I was a lot younger. We had three dogs, and so over the course of their life, I probably had dogs for about maybe 16 years. And none of the things you've mentioned ever crossed my mind. Yeah. You know, three of them would haul me up the street. <laughs> As I, I come home from school and home from work, and they would drag me up the street, barking and, and dragging, you know, yeah. and I'm yanking them back, and they did that their yeah. whole life. <laughs> it didn't stop, <laughs> you know. So, um, I, with I, this as well, if you look at one of the exercises I get for clients is, is um, if you have somebody that is um, and I say significantly four inches or more shorter or taller than you. Okay, then what I say to them is start at a standing point and take 10 natural paces forward and stop. Okay, so they'll move out. And then I say, to, then I will then move 10 natural paces forward and stop. There will be a difference in where the two of us end up. Okay, because their stride will either be shorter or longer than mine. Because our strides are different. Okay, so when you are, if you're walking with somebody who's shorter or taller than you, you the, you basically have to go the 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 longer strided person has to either shorten or slow their stride one of the two okay because the shorter person can't be asked to walk faster because then you get that walk trot walk trot walk trot so I always think that's like Peter Kay when he's talking about his dad running through the car park looking for the Sierra <laughs> right okay <laughs> so you get that kind of walk, trot, walk, trot, walk, trot. And you'll see that with people when, if they're walking um, with their child and they're walking too fast, the child will start jogging, slow down to walk, jog, slow down, walk, jog, slow down, walk, jog, slow down to walk. And what's 
unpleasant about that if you're the one that's doing that change in pace is that you actually can't get in a rhythm with your stride. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you can't just jog or you can't just walk. You're having to change all the time, okay? So that's the same as with your dog. So if your dog is, if you look at going back to the smaller dogs or a terrier, uh, you know, a last app, so a dachshund, their stride is so short anyway. So for every one stride that you take, your dog might take six or seven strides, you know. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be able to walk, walk with them. Now, what happens is that a dog's walking pace is incredibly slow. So when you look to the video with me moving with Logan uh, across the grass, that's him walking, okay? There's a video that we'll see, I think it's coming up, uh, I think it's the one after this or the one after that, where we're striding out and the dog is now starting to trot with us. But you'll see how quickly we're walking in order to do that. So um, you have to be aware of that as well. So generally what happens is that people walk far too fast or they walk, sorry, no, no, or, they don't walk fast enough or they don't walk slow enough. So they walk too fast for the dog to walk and too slow for the dog to trot. And two things will happen there. The dog either starts pacing, which is generally both left forward, both right forward, both left forward, both right forward. And you see that if you were to look from above, you would see their, their spine snaking like that as they're doing it. And that's not a natural movement. Your dog should really be have a, a, a movement like this when they're walking or straight, okay? So if you were to look at um, videos of a dog sprinting, a dog sprinting, basically from the, 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 the nose to before their tail starts to curl, it's going in a straight line. It's the same as with us. You know, you look at um, Usain Bolt. When he sprints, his spine's in a straight line. You know, it's not moving like that, you know. Um, when we dance, we move, you know, like that, because we're moving, we're dancing, our feet are moving, but if we're going in a straight line, our spine should be in a straight line. So if you're getting that section backwards and forwards like this, it can cause your dog to be uncomfortable. Um, so that's one thing that will happen, they'll pace with that both left, right, both left, left. Well, you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> right. Or what they'll do is they will pull forward to try and get their spine straight. So what they'll do is they'll just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and they'll pull through that lead and they'll pull through all that discomfort and pressure on their neck because that's actually easier for them than walking at that slower pace. So the the two examples that I give, if you look at, um, if you watch things like, uh, uh, well, we're showing our age now, but remember the Cook Report? Yeah. Right? So, if he was interviewing a witness, right, and they were going for a walk, okay, so basically a reporter walking and talking and interviewing somebody, it's done at a really slow pace because what they're doing is they're actually not going anywhere, but it would be weird for them to stand still, okay? So what they do is they just go for a walk along a path, and it's done really slowly because what they're doing is they're concentrating on speaking, not on walking. So that's what your dog is doing while he's at a slow walk. He's concentrating on sniffing, not on walking, okay? So that's done at a really, really, really slow pace. Or two cops walking a beat. They walk at that really slow pace because they've got nowhere to go. They're just going, they're just out in the environment moving, okay? So we either walk at that pace, that really, really slow meandering pace, um, or we start striding out, which is what we'll see in the video after this one. But we'll put this one on with going, just going down the stairs. Up and down the stairs, it's just in the bottom. So you see there, I put the treat placement down in front of his nose or on the step in front of him. You don't have to do all these things, but it just it, it gives you and see that there that slow stop and slow stops, you know, that's stop, start, stop, start. That's difficult for him. Okay, and that you can see there that nice smile in the lead there, okay. So he's, he's walking with me, and he now does this most of the time, even if I don't have food, okay? He's just learned, all right, this is how we navigate a set of stairs together. So the same as Sam and I, you know, it's, it's quite a similar thing that we're doing there. So that's nice there. So see how I'm kind of doing that nice wee trot down the stairs, and he's coming with me, okay? But even then, he jumps the last step, 
Thanks. Okay, because that's easy. Okay. For him. Yeah, so he jumped the last two steps because that's easier for him. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You can see that. You can see the improvement. You can see the evolution of it as it yeah. goes. Yeah, and that doesn't take very long. It just takes you doing it every single time you're out. Um, and uh, yeah. So the other thing with that is. Um, This is a, a, a client I had, and um, the woman had a, a, a little dog, um, and she she went she went a mile a minute. This client, right? I mean, she was like full on. She opened the door, and it was like this blast of energy hitting me, and everything was bum 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 bum, you know. And I said to her, "Can we just can we slow all that down?" I says, "Because if that's if that's the pace that you're going out with for a walk with your dog." No wonder he's up here before he even gets out the door, you know. So, so can we, even things like just breathing, slow things down, so slowly reach in, take a hold of his collar or his harness and clip the lead on, nice and relaxed, slowly move your hand up forward, move smoothly towards the door, move sm smoothly out. So I don't I, I don't know who, I'll need to look this up, but you've had the, um, I don't know, the US Marines use it, um, and I've heard Phil Dunphy from Modern Family using it as well, but um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast, okay? So we want to slow things down until we get them nice and smooth, and when we've got them smooth, the speed will take care of itself if we need speeds, which you'll see in the next video with um, Susie. Uh, so by slowing everything down and just being aware of what we're doing, it will centre your dog. So rather than bolting out the door, opening that door and being in a rush to get to the park and then flinging the ball for 20 minutes and then rushing back. That half hour that it takes you to do that, you could go for a half an hour meander around the block with your dog and you'd actually probably giving you, be giving your dog more stimulation, more sensory stimulation by doing that than you would be by taking the ball out and chucking it. Um, we still need to give them the physical activities as well, but uh, people get hung up on the walk as being the primary source of the dog's exercise and it should actually be about the two of you going out and doing something really, really cool together. I spend a lot of time with him just going out and hanging about. We just meander around the street, you know, and I see something interesting that he might be interested in and I kind of start um, guiding him towards it so that he then notices it and then we go together. So interesting smells and, you know... Um, you know, so it's just it's just changing our perception of what a walk actually should look like. I think that's. I think you reminded me of several things. Number one, in martial arts, if you can do the move slowly, you'll be able to do it quickly. You know, in fact, it might actually be hard to do it slowly. It's not, it yeah. pays to slow everyone right down because that gives you the skill and that gives you the control. Secondly, your environment becomes a fun part. Your environment becomes, yeah. you know, the stairs yeah. or the grass or the gravel or the chuckies become part of your assault course. So you can have fun yeah. with that. You know? Yeah, and thirdly, absolutely. The thing that struck me was if, if you and I were going out for a walk together, I wouldn't be chucking your jacket at you and hustling you at the door and getting you to oh. job. You know, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, you know, it wouldn't be like that. that that's, yeah. yeah, so many people will come home from work grab the dog, haul it out by the neck, and try and get the, the walk over as quickly as possible. Yeah. Then you take the box and go, well, I've walked my dog, so I'm guilt-free yeah. now. <laughs> the, yeah. the dog's like psyched. <laughs> so, yeah. And imagine, there's a couple of points here. So with the martial arts analogy that you used, um, the, I've, talk, I've talked about this before on a, on a video blog that I've done. People are looking for the outcome. The outcome is having having taken the dog, having had the dog out for a walk, right? It's checked that box, that that box, daily box, okay? So they think they've done it, and then they wonder why the dog dragging them around. Whereas if you concentrate on the each individual part of the technique. So if you're doing a throw, if you're doing a hip throw or a shoulder throw with somebody, if you're a new, you're training a new a new guy. The new guy is desperate to throw you across his shoulders. And that's why he doesn't move you, because all he's doing is trying to throw you. If he concentrates on the six steps, what you need to do to progress, he'll throw you no problem, but it's having the discipline to do that. Um, the other thing there about when you were saying take your jacket out and throw it at somebody, and, you know, if you are um, 
say you were going for you're you're walking around a, a marketplace in um, in France, okay, and you go on holiday, and you're walking around a marketplace with 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 your friend, your wife, you know, whoever, and um, you're interested in something, and they're constantly going, "Come on, come on," and you're like that. I, I, I just I, I'm, I, I just picked this wallet up. I, I want to have a look at it. I, I want I maybe want to buy it, you know. Okay. And they're constantly hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, and that's what we do with our dogs all the time. The dogs like that. I, I'm sniffing, you know, and they're getting hauled away by the collar. And uh, the, the 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 walk that we're covering next covers this, okay. Um, but the I say to my clients, can you give your dog a minute out of your life to let him investigate that smell? He says, because it won't even take a minute, it will take 20 or 30 seconds at the most, most of the time, okay? And see, even if it takes a minute, even if it takes two minutes, you know, can you give your dog two minutes out of your life to investigate a really interesting smell? So going back to that market analogy, you turn around to your, whoever you're with and say, can you give me a minute? Till I actually have a look at this thing because it's really nice and I want to look at it, you know, you know. So, um, you know, you know, going to, going to a museum and with somebody that appreciates art with somebody who doesn't appreciate art, that's not a good combination. They're standing there for forty-five minutes or an hour looking at a photograph or a, a painting, and you're like, ah, "Come on, you know, coordination streaks on, <laughs> you know." So, um, so it's just, it's just looking at these these. Yeah, it's just it's just looking at, at that from your dog's point of view. It's their walk as well, you know. In fact, it's primarily their walk. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, someone someone takes you out of captivity for an hour at your day. You know, yeah. Wraps you around the neck and throws you back, and and, and you're supposed to feel grateful. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and again, yeah. more and more, it's 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 the relationship. You know, I I've, I've said it to you before about the way you work and and, and the revelations are they always seem to get on the same road. Which is the dog's probably more trainable than the human is. You know, this is ninety percent human training. Yeah. It really is. It's fascinating. Right. Next video. Okay. So this is um, Susie with a dog. I can't remember what dog's name is right now. We are striding out here, okay? Okay. So the lead position, okay? So the lead is relatively short, okay? And Susie's striding out, okay? So you see there, I think I think a dog's called Charlie, right? Um, so watch this a couple of times. So basically, Susie's doing an A to B walk. We're going from A to B, and we're not stopping. So you see how there he moves towards our dog, and she just continues to stride forward. Okay. The same again there. That was nice. That was better that time. Okay. So she's basically saying, I'm not stopping. Okay. And you're going to have to keep up with me. So now, if we look at that, um, this isn't. Um, this is not the most pleasant walk for your dog. Okay. But there will be times where you have to walk your dog from A to B. Okay. So think about it. If you're you're out with your two-year-old and you're going to meet your friend or your three-year-old, and you say to them, "We've got five minutes. You need we need to go." And you take them by the hand and you just walk as quickly as your two-year-old can walk with you or your three-year-old. Okay. They don't get to stop and go into the sweet shop or the toy shop or you know. You just need to, and you say to them, "Do it another time." So this is really we will do this another time. Okay. So there's just a little bit of guidance there on that lead, okay? And on what cues the dog that this is happening is the lead position is short yeah, and the well, pace is fast. Okay. okay. Um, okay. And your dog absolutely needs to learn how to do this. But for every one time that you do that, so basically I would, for every minute that I did that, I would be providing my dog with 10 or 15 minutes of the slow stuff to balance that out, okay? Um, and um, the where this become, where this comes in, uh, uh, so it's always the whole thing about if we understand the why, why we're doing this. You're out with your dog and your dog, um, you've only taught your dog to meander with you, okay? And um, 
you've never taught your dog to walk like that. You get a text message or a phone call when you're out and you're 15, 15 minutes away at the house that, you know, your son's been locked out of the house and you need to go back up the road or there's a flood or there's another emergency. You get your dog back as, as easily as you both can from where we are to there, okay? You might only have five minutes to walk your dog, okay? So you're like, ah, I'm going to take the dog out. I'm going to go to the shop. I'm going to march down there, get a pint of milk and walk back, okay? That's a better experience from your, for your dog than being left in the house, more often than not, okay? But if you've only got five minutes, we can't afford to stop and sniff all the time, you know? Um, if you're walking down the street and, you're, and there's another dog coming towards you, and the other dog is having a hard time, you may be lunging and barking or whatever, you can then help out another owner by saying, I'm just going to walk him past, okay? And we just shorten up that lead and we march past. And what you do with that is the pace, the change in the lead position, and you look where you're going. You don't look at the hazards. So what you're just saying, it's pretty single-minded for us. We are going this way and you need to come with me, you know. Um, and your dog absolutely needs to learn how to do this. And what you could see in that video was the dog was checking with the owner. Yeah. Checking up. It's like, I'm like you know, is this okay? Are we yeah. doing it right? You know? Yeah. And what, what, what you're doing there by keeping your... Um, by keeping your body position the same all the time, what he's doing, he's only a young dog, I think he's only about nine months old. The whole time there he checks in with Susie and he's like, are we still doing this? Are we still doing this? Are we still, yeah, we're still doing this. But you see how, now you can turn around that boy, okay, and you can acknowledge him, but it's not, we're stopping him, we're doing this. Now what happens as well, that this is where, this is as harsh as I get, okay, but you're balancing it out against other things, okay. Um, if he goes to stop and sniff at that point, because the lead is short, okay, there's, there's only a little bit, there's maybe an inch or two of slack in that lead. If he moves forward towards that, you're actually just continuing to walk and the movement takes that slack and he doesn't get that jolt on the lead, you know, and um, so in the, in the learning stages of this, you keep that little slack in the lead and your movement will take the slack in if your dog veers off course. And then he comes back with you and gives you that slack again. Okay, now I, I am. There is there is no doubt in my mind that dogs don't particularly like this. Okay, but you can learn that as part of a fantastic life. This is just see if that's as bad as it gets occasionally, which is really. I mean, that's pretty much what I subscribe to. That's as bad as it gets for a dog in this great life. Yeah, I'm willing to put my dog through that. Now, the, the, the problem that we have as well is if we start that training when the dog is 6, 18, well, 6, 12, 18 months old and the dog has never, has only ever been allowed to do whatever it wants, yeah. that's now putting rules into a being which has never been bound by rules before and that is horrible for that, for that dog, you know. Um, and you would start guiding them back in. So the same as with Logan, I don't do that type of, of walk with him because it would be too unpleasant for him. Sorry, I didn't do that at the start, but we're now starting to do that type of walk because he's had all that background and I'm saying it's just a little bit more rules here, pal. You know, this is what we're doing. So is it a case of the earlier this starts, the better? Yeah. Um, with puppies, you need to be incredibly careful doing that because... Um, physically, they're un physically they don't have the, the capability of doing that while they're only weeks old. So um, it, it's been super careful with that. But how you would start that with a puppy is, as the puppy moves forward, you stand still and keep that dog on, on a on a short but slack lead. So if the dog moves two inches forward, he's got nowhere to go. Two inches forward, nowhere to go. Two inches forward, nowhere to go. And you've you've started the process of saying you don't get to do what you want every single time that you do that you want to do something um we have clients just now and um the guys are, are real happy you know so everything is like this wonderful life for his dog and what we said to him was yeah but you're not the only person in society you know i says so you letting your dog do having this free-spirited life you know his dog went away before um he says the dog raced off and there's a guy in his 60s with a big standard poodle 
and the dog, the poodle's bouncing up and down as this wee dog's running around. And I says, that's the impact that your behaviour has on somebody else because you've not imposed rules on your dog that impacts other people. And that's not fair because this is, we live in a society, you know, it's a shared space, you know, and our dog's behaviour shouldn't impact somebody else with their dog negatively, you know. Okay, so. we've got one last video, is that right? Yeah. It's just some movement drills over here. Yeah. So just a little bit of fun stuff. And again, there's a number of things here. So we've got the, the, the bollards there. We could weave in and out of them. Okay. But I'm going up and down over this. Um, and all I'm doing there is getting to him. It's just another exercise to teach him how to move with me. So we go up, up and over all the benches. And he gets his treat at the end for staying with me. But when we first started doing this, as you saw with the earlier videos, I was having to do a lot more reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Because he's now just like, ah, this is cool. <laughs> and because he's quite a, a physical dog, this can be this can be reinforcing in itself. It's just it's something. He, he's built to move. But the bollards that are this side of the bench, or the benches there, we could be moving in and out of them in a figure of eight, you know, like wee poles. Just getting them to move backwards and forwards, so that's all that was just a just a little bit of fun. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um so if somebody was in a position where they they recognise some of the kind of things, some of the common problems that we've been talking about in this webinar and other ones where you know, the classic marking inappropriately, jumping up on people, yanking on the lead, all those kind of things. Um there's a lot of things that you teach that people could kind of start to do themselves. I think there's things yeah. that you could definitely pick up and run with. Um, if they wanted more than that, how, what's the best way for someone to, to get in touch with you and to take, take these things further? So for one-to-one -one training with us, they can email me um, through my website. There's a contact form on there, which is glasgowdogtrainer.co.uk. Um, they can... There's lots of stuff on my Facebook, which is Glasgow Dog Trainer and Behaviour Consultant, and then my YouTube channel, which is Glasgow Dog Trainer on YouTube. So there's lots of stuff on there. The more I see your stuff, the more I love it. I think you're, I think you're very, very good at what you do, and you're world class at what you do. And you know, you, you're invited to speak at various conferences. You're all over the world doing stuff. Um, I think more people need to know. The, the value they can get from just spending 50 minutes with you. So the whole purpose of these webinars is to get people to see you in action, see the, the change in the dog, because you, you can see it, you can see it very quickly, within, you know, yeah. within seconds you can see a change in the behaviour. Um, and I think it's done in a really nice way, it's done in a kind of, it's humane the right word, it's done in a way that, you know, it's beneficial yeah. to everybody, it's a win-win. Um, yeah. And the, the, the message I keep hearing, the more I look at this is, you know, the dog's an equal. The dog's not a trophy. The dog's not a pet. The dog's not a, you know, a, a, a hindrance that you've got that you grudgingly spend time with. If that's your yeah. attitude, you, you know, maybe you shouldn't have one. But uh, <laughs> if yeah. you really want the, this little sorry person to have a good life, then yeah, it's it, it's, they're, they're a member of your family, and they they they're a, a, a living sentient being who who have have needs, and we need to take care of those needs. You know, um, and even if you're not wanting to, if you were to implement some of this stuff your dog would have a better quality of life and be happier, you know. So if you do more with your dog, your dog will want to do more with you, you know. More good stuff. It's just it's the same as with any relationship. You just, and just as I said before, the more stuff that you do with the other being, person, dog, in that relationship that the dog likes, the more he will want to spend or she will want to spend time with you, you know, and that's what we're looking for. Right, grab a jacket. I'm taking you for a walk. <laughs> Listen, we will do this again. Uh, there's more yep. to come. So again, thank you for your time. Love it, love it, love it. It just keeps getting better. So you know, you're gonna have to impress me more next time. But I'm yep. sure you will. Um, fantastic. Thank you for that. I hope everybody gets value from looking at this, and we will see you again sometime. Have a good night. Take it easy. Great stuff. Thanks, Jonathan. Cheers. Bye -bye.